<laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Dan. And um, I just want to say, um, you know, it's fabulous to be here today. And thank you for asking me to um, come in and spend some time with you all. Um, I really want to share some some great things that I think could really help to also set you up and your, your team up for um, 2021. Uh, we were chatting before that it's been um, a really challenging year. Um, in 2020 for you know, lots of different reasons. Um, and this would have also impacted staff, not only ourselves um, as, as business owners, but also our, our team. So what can we actually do to really help um, to have a strong year in 2021 um, and bring your team along with you? So the kind of things that I'd love to cover off for us today is what makes a high-performing team? Um, some of the reasons why staff may not be engaged and what is their superpower and I'll explain a wee bit about that. What are some practical things that we can do to make a difference um, and then for you to really be thinking about your own business um, and what do you need to be doing next year or what do you want to be doing and it's it's also about small steps it's not about changing everything at once that is usually too much for, for teams as well so really figuring out what's working well what do you want to further develop um, and what do you want next year to look like? So let me just tell you a, bit, a very um, quick bit about what I do because then you'll kind of understand about um, how I'm going to share what I am as well. Is that um, my business, I'm a what I call a business growth specialist. I do coaching and consulting, uh, sales training and workshops for SMEs from one-on-one -on -one through to uh, nationwide uh, companies, corporates, multinationals. Um, also have online programs here and um, in Australia um, and very much have a focus on sales. If we want to grow our companies and business, then we need to be able to sell, but also the, the Kiwi way. Um, I've got some very good ways in which to, to help businesses. Um, and also I'm about to develop a new women in business program um, too. Just a few quick things. Um, I've been doing this for a long time now, about 10 years, and I've done a lot in that time. Um, I've been in the media in, in different ways, used to teach marketing for the Auckland Chamber of Commerce, um, have done quite a bit of speaking, um, love lecturing, I'm a guest lecturer at Massey University for their business school, um, and I've been on the board for Dress for Success, which is a charity here in Auckland, helping women back into the workforce, and I've been busy working with them for the last two years or so, and a provider through ATED. So I just, I've been involved in business in SMEs. I've come from a corporate background as well. Um, and so what I'd love to share is um, really what I feel could really be practical, useful, um, and help set you up for a good year next year. So growing a business, look, you know what? We're business owners. It's not easy. It's hard. You know, we're often wearing all the hats. There never seems to be enough time in the day. We're juggling. I don't know about you, but it seems like it's a juggle with workload. We've got clients. We've got staff. We've got family. It's hard to fit everything in. And the time and time again, I've heard from my clients as well, they're saying, I just want my staff to do a good job. I just want my team to work and do a good job. <laughs> so let's jump straight into it. If you could wave a magic wand, what would your staff be doing? What would they be achieving every day? What difference would it make to your business? And how would this actually impact your clients, your customers? So what do you want from your staff and your team? And then it's really good to be thinking, well, where are you now? You know, often, um, or sometimes I will have uh, business owners, especially who've been in business for a long time, um, you know your business inside out. You've been doing it for years and years, but you may also have the team who you feel um, maybe are not performing as well as what you'd like them to. I'm going to share with you some key things around why that might be happening. Um, and some of the things that maybe we tend to forget a wee bit um, with business owners, especially when this is our world and what we do all day, every day. So what does make a high performing team? I've done a lot of research around this and it comes back to some core fundamental things, which is really your staff and people who work with you, they want to know where you're going. What's the purpose? You know, what's, what are you wanting to achieve in your business? You know, what's, what do you do? What service or products are you providing? What's your vision? What's your mission? You've got to take your team along with you. Otherwise, sometimes, you know, this is a difference between people coming and being very um, engaged, um, behind you 100%, helping you grow your business, or some who might just come along and watch, some of my guys will sometimes say, is, it seems that they just come and eat their lunch, do the job and go home. 
there's a real disconnect there and there's reasons why and we'll go into this in the very next slide as well so mutual respect and trust that open communication is really important do people feel that they can be involved um, do they feel that they're part of the business? Um, are their ideas asked for? Are they listened to? You know, are ideas actioned on? Do they, you know, um, do they feel valued? Is their contribution recognised? But also, are we rewarding our staff and our team for the hard work that they do? And culture, I know we've got a, a short period of time. Having a positive culture, what do the staff feel when they come to work? What do they say about the business when they're not there? You know, how long have they been with you? Is it easy to get staff? You know, often we want to get the best people to come and work for our businesses and we want those absolute stars, but they're also in demand. So why would they come and work for our business as opposed to others? What are we doing as business owners to create a great place to work? So let's look at why staff might not be engaged. They may not feel they're involved or empowered. One of the key things that I often find is sometimes as business owners, we don't always communicate and tell the team what the goals is for the year. We don't always involve them in the planning. It might be that the business owners here and the staff are here doing their individual jobs. So how can we actually bring them together and get them excited about the business and what you do? So we need to value them. Sometimes there's poor communication. Sometimes it's that, do you know what, sometimes lack of leadership, um, I feel too, is often because we're just busy, busy trying to get through the day, busy trying to focus on what you need to do to, it might be to get through the week, that there's, you know, um, increased workload, there's increased demands, there's so much kind of coming at you. So this stuff, while we're talking about it, is all very real because you know, there's only so much of us to go around. This is why we need staff and why we need team to be able to delegate and to be able to help us grow our, our businesses. Sometimes there's no clear career path. Think about your people who you've had for a long time in your business. Now, I'm not saying that they necessarily want to be, um, you know, uh, the next managing director, but what people do want to know is what's in it for them. We're going to go into this in a wee bit more. People often come back to, it's like you with any, any jobs that you've had. Where are you heading? You know, what do you want to, um, what skills do you want to develop? Where do you see the business going? You know, and so training, I'm going to talk to you a wee bit about training um, and onboarding when people start, because this is often a wee area with us in small to medium business that I think that we're missing a bit and we could actually really work on. Workload. Now, we've had COVID this year. Things have changed. Uh, people have been made redundant. Uh, you know, people have, um, some businesses have gone under. Others have actually, um, they're struggling to keep up with sales because of the certain types of industries they're in. So a lot has changed, not only for us as business owners, but for your staff as well. And it's been really quite stressful this year for a lot of people. So let me ask you, do your team know where you're heading? Do they know where the business is going? You know, do you sit down together and do you work this through together, especially January? This is why now is a great time to be thinking about this. The beginning of the year is often when we want to be doing your business, your strategy planning, but involving your team. They can have amazing ideas, but often they may not share that unless we ask them. So how can you involve them January, February time when you're sitting down and looking at the direction of the business? You want to get them behind you. And if you want to get them really engaged, then involve them in the business. So three key things I want to talk about is really three key steps to really help to get staff on board, to really get their buy-in and really have a good positive team working together. Three key things is recruit really well, onboarding and training and involve them and support. Now, I have a lot of discussion around recruiting with, um, with people. Uh, and one thing I would say with anything in business is um, get the experts to help you. So often with recruitment, um, they hear, I hear them say, hire slowly. Right? So sometimes we tend to, when we're so busy and so desperate for someone, it's just like, I need someone, I need someone now. I'll take the best of who applies. That can come back and bite you a wee bit down the track. So it really is a good idea, hire slowly recruit well and if you haven't got an ideal person with the first intake of um, candidates 
then do what you can to take your time and hire the right fit. Another thing as well is hiring on attitude and fit for your team. So you can teach people tasks, but it's hard to teach them to have a different personality. So hire with the right attitude. What do you want for your business? Do you want someone who shows the initiative? Do you want a go-getter? Do you want somebody who um, gets things done? You know, they may not have the exact task that you're wanting, but then what can you do to invest in some training to upskill them? Yep. So have a real think around the fit for the team. You know, we often know too is that one person who isn't the right fit can really change things and change the dynamics for everybody. So I'd say just be a wee bit careful around recruiting. Um, recruit, try and get the absolute best person and that best fit as well. Um, I also, um, for, for clients too, is, you know, recommend there are recruitment specialists, there are um, employment law specialists, there are making sure your contracts are up to date. Um, as employers, we've got to be careful now. We've got to dot our I's and cross our T's um, and do everything correctly. So uh, make sure to bring in help into the business as you, as you need it. So we want to get the right people up front. But what happens when they start? Now, a lot of the time, if you're absolutely busy, which is why you're getting somebody on board, <clears throat> the problem that I see is that often they might get one or two days of training right at the beginning, but then we're busy. And then as business owners or whoever is um, training them, you're right back into your workload and the person's left on their own. Um, now we've shown them once and they need to get on with it. One of the key things that sets up expectations at the beginning is a really good onboarding process. Now, this doesn't have to take a long time. Everything that we're talking through today doesn't cost a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot of time. But I spend quite a bit of time with my guys really around this onboarding and training because if you want to have a high-performing team and you want them to be working well for you and the business and excited about where your company is going, we've got to capture that right at the beginning. So the more organized and structured you can be, then the better. And the, you set the expectations about the type and the quality of work you want them to be doing in that first, first few days. But what we do is we actually have structure for at least the first month. It doesn't mean you have to be with them day in and day out for that month, but it means they know exactly what they need to do. They're spending time with different staff members um, and upskilling your team regularly. So it might seem that it's not the most, what should I say, the most exciting thing to do is, you know, spend, you've got to spend time up front. But time and time again, I've just seen that if we don't, it's really hard to undo that later down the track. And if we do invest time at the beginning, we tell people, they absolutely buy into the business, why you've set it up in the first place. It means then that we teach them well and they do things exactly the way that you'd like them to from the beginning. And when I say upskilling regularly, sometimes if you've had people who've maybe been in your business for a few years, um, say for example, I was thinking of a client, we had somebody who has been in accounts for about the last five years. That's great, she does a great job. But what's happened is Zero. they use Zero as their software. Zero's changed a lot. So the way in which they were processing, they were doing invoicing and accounts has now moved so much in the last five years or so but she'd never had training in between times. So they were missing out on some great things that they could be doing for their business. So really be thinking around upskilling regularly. What can your team be, and also doing themselves, there's a lot that we can be doing that doesn't cost you a lot of money. What, can, what podcasts, what webinars can they be watching? What YouTube videos? We're in small business, we don't have big budgets. So what can we do to make sure we have a really efficient, high-performing team and why that's important is it comes down to time and money because you get a lot done. You've got a great team who are, when I say behind you, literally, when, say if you have five staff and every person is pumped to come to work, they love what they do, they love their clients, it's not all on your shoulders. It's a great way to grow a business when you can have teams that feel like that. And I want to talk a wee bit about training. Have you heard of this before? It says, um, it's a saying that says, one of the frequent arguments against investing in professional development is, what happens if I train my people and they leave? And a really good question is, what happens if you don't train them and they stay? That's the thing. Often we think it's going to cost me money. 
but I could spend all this money and they could leave next week. <laughs> but it's actually really important because we could have them. Oh, sorry, I might need to. There's just a weird thing there. What happens if we don't train them um, and they stay? So one thing that I've actually put together, um, and this is a wee acronym that, that I quite like um, around teams. Now, I just want to unpack this a wee bit because there's a bit on this slide here. Is involving and supporting people is what, uh, think around people in your team. Now, this could also be if you outsource. If anyone outsources work, and we'll have a, um, we can have a chat with some questions afterwards about that. Um, looking at people who work with you, what are their strengths? I'm going to talk to you about what their superpowers are, right? It's also how you can make things easier for you as a business owner, easy for your staff. And we, you will hear the sayings that happy staff, happy customers as well nice bottom line it is all tied in together so what are your staff strengths what are they good at are they doing what they love to do have you got someone who's a real organizer you know with their job description it's not about changing their job on its head but it's around what are their interests what are their motivations understanding our team you know and especially if we have smaller teams we have the time to get to know them but it's also around them work-wise I think there's a wee bit of a, um, a, sometimes lines get a wee bit blurred, uh, especially if we get quite friendly with our staff when we have small teams. Um, we, they're also there to do a job. I'm going to talk to you a bit about performance and expectations as well. And you're the employer. Now, we get on really well with people. However, when things don't work out quite so well, uh, we also need some structure within the business to be able to help you to manage that. So we need to understand your staff. You've got three different people. They've got different personalities. They've got different ways they work. They've got different things they like to do, right? So we can't treat everybody the same. You want to get the best out of your team? We've got to pull the best out of the team and figure out um, what it is that kind of lights them up. So P, that performance and expectations. What expectations do you have for your staff? Do you set them goals? Do you set them targets? Do they know what you want them to be doing and achieving? Or do we kind of have chats with them and hope that they will, you know, um, do what we're needing them to do? I very much like structure. Um, I kind of say um, in a way is when I say to my, my clients, um, let's operate the business like a mini corporate, what I'm meaning is just having some real systems and some structure and everybody knowing what they need to be doing uh, without a lot of the layers that we have in big business as well. So policies and procedures. Now, if you want your team to perform, we've got to have P's and P's. They've got to know what they need to be doing. They've got to have something to be referring to. And it's a much easier way to manage them, especially if there's any challenges by being extremely clear um, on exactly how they're supposed to be performing. And what opportunities have you got for your guys for learning and for the career? Where do they want to go? What do they want to be doing in one year or two years time? It doesn't matter if we're a smaller business. What matters is it comes back for them is what's in it for me. That's what um, all of us naturally tend to think about. So if, they, if you've got somebody, whether they're working for you part-time, full-time, is what do they love to do? What skills do they want to develop more? And how can you help them? But remember, how can it add value to your business? That's the key thing as well. How do you say thank you? Do you say thank you to your staff? Sometimes when we're under pressure and we're under stress, we often come out with the things that aren't going well and the kind of key problems. But how can we actually say thank you and recognize and reward them? Let's really focus on upskilling the team. So what is their superpower? Do you know what they're really good at? Do you sit down? Do you have a chance? Do you see it as well? You know, um, sometimes there are certain things in their job role that they absolutely love. If they are the person for that, what else can they be doing to add value to the business? So if it was one thing I would kind of take away, you know, from today is really to be thinking about your team for next year. And in January, when you're doing your planning, what's working really well? Where are the gaps and things, the bottlenecks in your business? And then how can you fix that? And what do you need to do to help support your team to help them do that? Does anybody, um, how about you guys for um, KPIs and targets and goals? You know, I know some of you might be 
um, setting this for your teams and others might not be quite so structured around that. Um, I love KPIs, targets, goals and deadlines because you get things done. And you know what? Often staff like them too because they know what they need to be doing. They know what you want from them. They also get a sense of you, you're able to celebrate your wins. If you don't know where you're going, each day just seems like the next. But together, when you can come as a team, this is what we're working on for the next quarter. And this is what I need you to do. I need you to do this, you to do that. Together, you're actually developing those key goals. They need to be achievable, but you're motivating your team. And how great is that when you actually nail and smash your goals and you go out celebrating those wins together. So we've got to bring the team together. Sometimes we shy away a wee bit from KPIs and targets. Sometimes people may not feel a bit comfortable with that. Um, so it's baby steps, I think, if you're going to introduce them from nothing. Um, but it's really, instead of maybe KPI, you might talk about a goal or what's a target we need to achieve for the next month or the next quarter and just start getting people to be working towards what do they need to get done. You'll be surprised if it, it's not what we do, it's how we do it and how we introduce it that has a big impact. Every, everything that I'm saying here will have a big impact on your business, um, on cash flow, on turnover, um, and your success. But sometimes our focus, um, you know, when we sometimes, if things are just trucking along, what I would encourage you to do is come back and really focus on your team if you want to have a really good year in 2021. And what can you do to really get them performing efficiently, productively, but happy, happy teams? And how can we say thank you? Now, just quickly, it's not always about a lot of money. It's not always about big bonuses. Different things for different people. Some people are pat on the back and thank you so much. Some of my um, clients, they will give a little chocolate fish on their desk and say um, thank you. And that matters to some people. Others, they might have like a little Oscar award kind of thing, you know, with who's done something amazing that week. So some people love outward recognition and some people are a bit shy and they might just like a quiet word and a, hey, I really appreciate what you did around that. That was awesome. The client thought it was fantastic. So we want to get best stuff out of our team. Let's look at how we can set them up to be successful and thank them along the way as well. Now, on the flip side of things, if there are a few wee issues, and look, there are, because we're dealing with people. If mm. there are a few issues along the way, um, something a wee bit challenging, which I was um, taught once many, many years ago when I was managing staff, is look at yourself first, and especially us as business owners, because we're often what's called unconsciously competent, which means that what we do, we're so specialist, and it's our business a lot of time, is our knowledge is just common sense just common sense to us that, that that's the way that you would do yeah. it but for others we need to really think okay if the team aren't performing exactly as you'd like them to have you explained it correctly or did you tell them last year and things have changed since then do we have clear policies and procedures you can actually guide them to and say hey next time you do it here's a step-by-step -step, um, process of exactly how we do that when you process an order can you have that with you and just take your time and go through it step by step Sometimes if we are training, you've trained someone and they are then training somebody else, it then gets diluted as well. So have we given them enough training? When was the last time you actually sent them on a training program? Um, what I do and I've had for my staff over the years is I get them to research. Okay, you know, what's an area that you'd love to know more about? It might be um, social media or Facebook ads. Great. You research up two different um, training programs that you'd like to do. Let me know and let's look at what's the best fit. Yep. So get them involved and get them excited about upskilling as well. But all the time, it's linked back to your business. It's always adding value back to your company as well. If there are any issues, do they know exactly what's expected of them? And that's why having those goals, having those key kind of targets, having regular meetings, that's one thing I'd kind of say too is um, how often are you having staff meetings together? Really, at least once a week would be ideal. Um, and it's not a chat. It's a business meeting, right? Another thing I know a lot of companies do is a huddle. So they might do like a five-minute huddle in the morning, especially fast-growing businesses. Um, and it's not a big meeting with that one. It's like, okay, guys, what have we got on? Right, who's doing what today? 
Do you need my help? What do you need from me? Okay, fantastic. Now, some really busy businesses will again have a bit of a quick get together um, before everyone goes home. Says, right, what's been done today? Because things are moving so quickly. So really it's thinking around how can you use your time? But especially if any of you are really busy, I really would recommend you have at least an hour meeting once a week because it will save so many emails. It will save so much follow up when you're wondering who's done what. That's why um, a lot of them will do these five minute huddles. They know exactly what's going on every single day and they can pick up bottlenecks and issues really quickly. So if you're growing quickly um, or you're really busy, look at how you can manage your time and your staff time as well. And another wee thing, do you have, do you have a lot of knowledge? But, and you've shown them a couple of times. And a quick example is I worked with a really nice guy um, a few years ago now who was in his 60s in a retail, very busy retail store in the city. Um, he had, oh, I think about 10 staff. And some of them were 18 and 19. They were young girls. They were young women who were um, maybe at uni and working part-time there. He was really quite frustrated with the team. Because he was saying, for goodness sake, I've shown them how to do it. They keep on doing it wrong. You know, why is that? And I was saying, okay, well, how long have you had your business? And he said, 21 years. I'm like, okay, how long have they been here? And he said, two weeks. I'm like, okay, what kind of training did they have? I showed them. I spent the first day with them. I showed them everything they needed to do. And he was really frustrated, but there was nothing documented. There was nothing they could refer to. There were no policies or procedures. So the poor young ones, um, it was really hard for them to do exactly what he was asking them to, because when you're bombarded with so much, you know, in your first few days, it's, there's no way they can remember everything that he'd said. So systemizing what you're doing, that makes a big difference if you want your team to be really successful. And it doesn't have to be another wee tip around that. It doesn't have to be you thinking, oh my God, where am I going to have the time to do that? A really good tip is to get your newest people to write it for you. Mm -hmm. That's a game changer because, and you give them a template and you bullet point it out because then you can see how well you've taught them. They're actually putting together that procedure. You're then just updating it. Um, and there they are. They're helping you to develop your policies and procedures. So it's protecting your time, but helping your team to be successful as well. And just the last few wee slides here, I just want to kind of say around this year is just be a little bit mindful for your team, for you as well, but it's not business as usual. Our world was turned upside down. We are, you know, learning to live with it. We're now, a lot of people are a bit tired now and we're really looking at next year. Um, so a wee thing as well is before coming into the end of the year, for those of you who do have staff, how can you actually just really have a good end to the year? How can you celebrate the end of the year? You know, you're still in business. You've still got your staff with you. How can we thank them? What can you do together? Get them going away on holiday, thinking and feeling as part of that team and get them excited about 2021 while they are away on the holiday break. You could even be saying to them, hey, while you're away, we'd love for you to have a think. We're going to have a great year next year. You know, let's come back and together, you know, um, I'd like to do things a wee bit differently this year. So also, this is a great opportunity for you if you do want to introduce anything um, that's a wee bit different to what you've done this year. It's a great platform to do it because, you know, the world has changed. So bring them together in January. You'll do your confidential, your financials, that kind of stuff. It's, you may not necessarily involve them in that. But where you want to be heading strategically as a business, you know, what it might be what product services you want to be growing, get their ideas. They're, a lot of the time, they're talking to your customers and your clients every single day. They can help you with that. So just to, um, in summary here, look at what's working really well, but look at what you also want to change. And remember, just little steps at a time. Um, otherwise, your team tends to get a bit overwhelmed. So what's most important and just small things that you can implement and do well, one thing at a time. But look at your training. I really would encourage that for next year. Um, what training and support do they need? And what's in it, that WIIFM, what's in it for me? That's from your staff point of view. Any kind of challenges, what I often do is think, um, especially for my, my clients as well, for their teams of things that are happening, where's your staff member at? What's going on for them? Are there things happening at home? You know, are they feeling overwhelmed at work? How can we actually break that down? Look at structure and goals. Give them something to work towards. And if you want to start gentle, start with, okay, a company goal, a team goal together. 
you know, um, I'm very much for individual accountability as well. But if you want to get started, bring them together as a team goal. And then what does each person need to do within that month to work towards that overarching goal together? And what kind of culture do you want? I asked a client this the other day. What do you want people to say about your business? You want to hire people. Why would they come and work with you? How can you stand out as opposed to others in your industry? What type of feel do you want when you come into the office, but also for your customers and your clients? Right. So let's have a real think around, you know, we have control over that being the business owner as well. I just think there's someone's phone there. there. Thank you. Right. Get your team involved in your planning with what you feel comfortable with, I would say around that. But you know what? Have fun. It's been hard yards for a lot of companies. Have fun. Go out, celebrate some stuff together. Think of wee things you can do that don't cost a lot of money. It might be that you, uh, some, some clients might get the coffee van to come around, you know, um, once every couple of weeks. And it might cost them $20, but they have a, a lovely coffee and a kind of a morning tea. It might be that you do those little things uh, that matter and just show that you kind of appreciate your staff. If we want staff to, to um, perform or function, um, you know, and really get behind our businesses, because that's our business, remember, as well. It's not their business. So we've got to get them excited around our company um, and bring them, you know, together. And I, I'd love for you to just have a think around what are your next steps and what can you do to have a strong 2021 for yourself, for your business, but also for your staff. So in order for us to get what we want, we need to help others get what they want. And that means your team. So have fun, start small, get some real kind of goals. But when I keep on saying bring people along, because I see it and it doesn't happen overnight. And this is, you know, and often I will, um, I actually go in and help run staff meetings and I help bring these teams together um, sometimes, depending on how I work with clients. So, um, it's hard when you're a business owner on your own and your team are here. Next year, look at what you can do to be starting to get um, bring together. Great for your clients, um, but also in order for you to get what you want, like I say, think about your team, what we can do to really help and support them. Um, and I think we all deserve to have a great year next year um, and move on from 2020. <laughs> cool. <laughs> awesome. So Thank that you, was... That was honestly, I could talk about this forever, and I I had a I have a little window, so <laughs> so thank you everybody for um yeah for listening to that. It's such um you know it makes such a big difference, and there's so many different moving parts to our business that sometimes we kind of overlook it a wee bit. So yeah.